Hi everyone, it's Kate. Welcome back to my channel. I am here today to share the story of what led up to my being banned from the Planners Collaborative, or TPC as it is known. I posted a little over a week ago on social media about this and the fact that I was banned and I said in that post that I was going to provide the whole story because it was much more detailed than what could fit in a social media post. So I'm here to do that today. This is actually the second time I'm filming this video. When I went to edit the first one, the lighting was so bad that it looked a little like I was telling a ghost story and that's not quite the vibe I'm going for here. So I am recording it again. I am going to start by reading that social media post to provide a little bit of context and then I'm going to go back a little bit and share what led up to that post. So on July 12th, I shared the following on Instagram and my Facebook group. To my dear customers and supporters, on Sunday night, I was banned from all groups and accounts associated with TPC. Last year, I paid the fee for a table sponsorship at the TPC convention, which was held this past weekend. I realized late last week that there was no table at convention sponsored by my shop and that in fact none of the sponsorship benefits I was supposed to receive had been fulfilled. On Thursday afternoon, I sent Caitlin, the TPC founder and admin, a DM about it. On Saturday morning, I followed up with an email. With no response or acknowledgement of either, on Sunday night, I asked for my money back. In response, I was banned. In full disclosure, my sponsorship funds were ultimately returned to me. The whole story is much more involved and disheartening. I will provide the entire story soon, but until then I want to assure you that I will of course still honor the sale this week and look forward to sharing the freebies with you all tomorrow. With love, Kate. So leading up to me posting that, I wasn't even sure that I was going to address it at all. Um, my full preference would have been to just move on from it however two things factored into me deciding to ultimately post it one was that I did want my customers to know that the sale which was supposed to start in two to three days from that time was still going to be honored would still happen in my shop I had been posting about it for the better part of a month so it was still going to happen and the second reason was that I knew uh, from hearing from certain people and from uh, just seeing things myself that a narrative about what had happened was being shared that was not truthful um, and did not include all of the relevant details. So I decided that I would post what I posted, but that also I would share the entire story because it is very disheartening. It's very disappointing the outcome is not at all what it should have been. Um, I am not trying to change that outcome. I think it's for the best, but I do think that everyone who has supported me and everyone who has poured time and money into TPC, and I know a lot of people have, do deserve to know the entire story. So that's what we are going to do today. So to give you a quick background on my history with TPC, I found uh, Caitlin's YouTube channel at some point, in tw I think in 2019. I didn't know that she was involved with TPC. I didn't know there, there was a TPC, I didn't know it was a thing. And I want to say it wasn't until the summer or fall of 2020 that I realized that she had a collab sale and that it existed. <clears throat> So I applied as a shop for the first time in, for the December 2020 sale. I was accepted. Since then, I participated in 13 of the 19 sales that were held. So uh, there were five I didn't apply for, for various reasons, time, scheduling, all of that kind of stuff. And uh, there was one that I did apply for and didn't get accepted to. But 13 of the 19 I have participated in. So I've been an active community member, really dedicated to uh, wanting to give the TPC community 
what they were looking for in sticker shops um, and really ta tailored a lot of my product offerings and designs around that. I want to say right off the bat that I think TPC is, a, is an amazing community in spite of some questionable leadership decisions. The community itself is fantastic and I genuinely am truly going to miss being a part of it. I'm going to talk a little bit about that a little later. But just to give you a sense of my involvement in TPC, the convention that was held July 8th and 9th was actually the second event that I sponsored um, of uh, TPCs. The first one was the Garden Party in July of 2021. When that event was announced in February 2021, I did ask for the sponsorship guide information and I ended up sponsoring the florals for that event. I'm going to come back to that one a little later as well. There are a couple things I'm going to mention here that we're going to circle back to afterwards. In terms of other TPC related things, I did join the TPC book club uh, shortly after it was launched, a couple months after it was launched, I think. Um, and I joined in April of 2021. I also uh, joined as a member of Caitlin's YouTube channel when she launched it at the highest tier. I was part of the 2021 Black Friday sale, which is a huge TPC event. Um, and then we have the sponsorship of the convention as well. So all of those things that I mentioned, we are going to come back to because in hindsight, there are things about them that don't quite add up that sort of lend well, they lend context, at least, to what happened with convention. Let's talk about convention. So I believe in July last year was when the convention was announced and uh, Caitlin did share during that live um, video that there were sponsorship opportunities available. I asked for the sponsorship document um, and she sent it to me that night. I have a copy of that here with me that um, I'm going to share some of the details from to give you a sense of what I was expecting with regards to sponsorship. So there's a whole document here. Um, it goes over the event. It says, I am excited to offer the following partnership opportunities for shops to be a part of this highly requested event. There will be sponsorship and vendor opportunities in various shapes and sizes while remaining thoughtful to ensure meaningful spotlight is given to everyone involved. Partners are encouraged but not required to attend the event in person. So I want to highlight two pretty important parts of that. One is meaningful spotlight is given to everyone involved and the other is that partners are encouraged but not required to attend the event in person. So when this event was announced, COVID was still very much a thing. It still is now. Um, I didn't know at the time Canada still had a lot of travel restrictions so I didn't even know at the time how easy it would be to go. But either way I was happy to sponsor the event regardless. So after reading through the document, I opted to sponsor a table. Um, so this is what the table sponsors portion of the document reads. The shop will sponsor a table for eight attendees at a cost of $300 US. Total sponsors 35. And then the benefits for the table sponsors were feature and recognition before and during the convention on social media and event audio visual, individual branded signage at the sponsored table and quarter page program feature. So I read through all that. I thought it sounded great. At the time the event was being billed as 280 people. And I thought that sponsoring a table um, at that event would be great. So I reached out to Caitlin, let her know that I would like to sponsor a table if there were still spots available. And, um, and she said, yes, she would put me down for one and um, away we go. So that was sometime in July. On August 27th, Caitlin reached out to me to ask me two questions. One was, 
um, about remitting payment for sponsorship. The second was to ask if I wanted to be a part of the TPC Black Friday sale. So on the 27th of August, I paid that sponsorship fee via PayPal. And I said, yes, I would love to be a part of the Black Friday sale. She said, great, more information will come to you on that in October, meaning the Black Friday sale. And she also asked at that point if I wanted to buy my convention ticket at that point. Um, I indicated that I'd have to wait a while because we were moving unexpectedly and uh, just had a lot of expenses. But that conversation in August was the only conversation that Caitlin and I had about my sponsorship until two weeks, ago, just under two weeks ago, paid my sponsorship fee. And that was the end of it. In January of this year, Caitlin reached out to ask if I was ready to purchase my convention ticket. At that point, I did ask her if there would be any additional COVID measures in terms of masking or distancing, uh, things like that. And she indicated that no, she doesn't add anything above what the local what the local area has in place, uh, which in Kentucky at that time was basically nothing. Up here, we were still under a mask mandate um, and Omicron was like raging. So my husband and I chatted about it and um, I looked at the year before uh, COVID numbers between January and July to sort of get an estimate of where they might be because We'd never been through something like this before. It was the only data that I could even somewhat try to rely on. Um, it didn't look good, even taking into account, um, you know, the lower number of cases. It looked as though we would still have, or the U.S. would still be having about 120,000, between 100,000 and 120,000 new cases a day in July, uh, having not seen another person in public unmasked up here for well over a year, maybe even 18 months at that point. It must have been 18 months. We just decided we weren't comfortable with traveling in person. But between me paying my sponsorship in August 2021 and then this conversation in January of this year, um, Caitlin had added a virtual convention as an option for those who couldn't or didn't feel comfortable traveling. So I let her know that night that we weren't comfortable traveling there in person, but I would love to purchase a ticket to virtual convention and that if I could do that that night, that I would be happy to. Um, her response to that was, sure, that's fine. She gave me her PayPal info. I sent the money that night and, uh, and that was it. And by that was it, I mean, that was the last time that Caitlin and I ever spoke about convention. Um, my sponsorship hadn't even come up that night. We didn't have a single conversation about convention or sponsorship until the night of July 10th. As far as I was concerned, nothing was changing about my sponsorship. Um, when I said I would prefer to attend virtually, Caitlin did not make mention of my sponsorship. I certainly didn't expect my sponsorship to change or, um, you know, that I wasn't going to follow through with it. I had paid it months before. Um, I still wanted to sponsor a table at convention. So as far as I was concerned, that was all still happening. So over the course of the next few months, I expected to start to see some of those social media posts about sponsors start to pop up and they did. Um, there was a post shared for the two main event sponsors. There was one about the Friday night sponsors. Um, I believe there was one about the beverages, the alcohol and the chocolate sponsors and one for the uh, volunteer sponsors. Maybe also one about the program sponsor. Then social media posts about sponsors just stopped and there was not one again at all. So I knew leading into the weekend of convention that that particular perk of sponsorship hadn't been fulfilled. That on its own would never have been enough for me to 
go to the length of asking for my sponsorship funding back. However, it did sort of put the entire thing on my radar a little bit that if one hadn't been fulfilled, I did want to make sure that the others had been fulfilled. The other thing is that not being able to attend in person, um, I was looking forward to at least being able to see a photo of my table, um, being able to share it on social media and that kind of thing. And that is why on Thursday the 7th, I reached out to Caitlin via DM to ask if she could send me a photo of my table um, when it was set up because I did want to share it on social media. I didn't receive a response to that. I know that she was busy. She did read it, however, um, but there wasn't, there wasn't a response to it. So I actually reached out to a friend who was going to be at convention and asked her if she could snap a photo of the table. And I also asked for a picture of the sheet in the program that had my shop's logo on it. I do want to mention I was never asked for my shop's logo for this program or for the table. However, um, I had sponsored an event previously where I was asked for it. And I, uh, I mean, I've participated in so many TPC sales that I know that um, Caitlin has my shop logo. So I didn't think too much of that. Um, leading up to it. On Friday the 8th, my friend who I had asked um, to take the photos reached out to let me know that there was no table with my shop's name on it, nor was my shop mentioned in the program at all. So that told me that none of the three perks of sponsorship had been fulfilled. Um, and when it comes down to it, sponsorship is a business agreement. Um, a business agrees to provide funds in exchange for some sort of perk to them, which is usually in the form of recognition and exposure, um, which is truly the, the benefit to the business. I was thrilled to sponsor the TPC event and to be a part of it in some way. However, I did expect that those benefits and both sides of the agreement would be fulfilled. And so when they weren't, and I realized this on the Friday, I, I did know that I was going to be asking for my money back because that is the only, it's the only logical outcome to it. I've worked many events in my life. I have family members who have run hundreds of events. Um, all dealing with sponsorships. If you can't fulfill your end of it, you have to return the money. That's just, that's just the way it is. So on Saturday, July 9th in the morning, I sent Caitlin the following email. Caitlin, I understand that despite having paid the sponsorship for a table at convention nearly a year ago, and in brackets, August 27th, 2021, PayPal transaction confirmation attached. There is no table at convention with my shop's name or logo on it. I also understand that my shop is not listed in the event program as a sponsor. As now none of the three sponsorship benefits outlined in the 2022 convention partnership opportunities document have been fulfilled, I am expecting that you'll return my sponsorship money. Please confirm by end of day today, July 9th, and let me know when I can expect to receive the refund. Thank you, Kate. And I attached a screenshot of the confirmation from PayPal of my sponsorship payment. So that was Saturday morning. That was the day of convention. Um, I did ask that she confirmed to me by the end of the day. I understand that she had a very busy day, but she did have time to post her dinner on Instagram that night. So she obviously was on social media after convention wrapped up that afternoon. Sunday afternoon, I still had not heard back from Caitlin. So that was a DM on Thursday, an email on Saturday about wanting a refund of sponsorship funds. So it's a pretty important thing. Um, still hadn't heard back. So on Saturday afternoon, I sent a PayPal invoice for the amount of the refund. And that is ultimately what got Caitlin's attention. Now, was that a bit of an extreme step? 
I can see that some people would think so. However, I had attempted twice to communicate with her, had not heard back. Um, I knew she'd at least seen my DM because it showed that she'd read it. So she knew that I was wanting a photo of my table, regardless of whether I had sent it that night or the next day or a few days later or after we'd had a conversation, the bottom line would have been that I was expecting my money to be returned to me. So Caitlin's message on Sunday night said, sorry, I'm so behind on messages and then asked, why is there an invoice in PayPal for me? And I answered, hi, for the reasons stated in the invoice and that I emailed you about yesterday, none of the three sponsorship benefits outlined in the table sponsor line of the sponsorship guide were fulfilled. And I attached a screenshot of my email. Half an hour later, I received the following message. Kate, I have not received any email from July 9th, including in my spam box. However, as you know, per my correspondence months ago, I converted your table sponsorship to virtual sponsorship after you elected to not attend the in-person convention and instead attend virtually. I did this with the intention of giving you better promotion as this would provide you with recondition, I think she meant recognition, in the virtual small group sessions as well as the main group where you would actually be participating and participants would see your face and interact with you. I was very disheartened to see an invoice from you demanding a full refund without any attempt to clarify any misunderstanding you may have. As I am sure you've seen by now, I have fully refunded your sponsorship as well as the cost of the virtual ticket. Please feel free to keep your swag packet, which should already be in Canada if not delivered. And then a second message seven seconds later saying, as a result, this will also terminate your shop's relationship with TPC, its events, etc. This is effective immediately and includes the July sale. Communication, collaboration, and customer service have always been values at the fore of everything I do with TPC and asked of the shop owners who participate each cycle. No response or future communication is needed regarding this matter. If there was any misunderstanding or need for clarification on your part, you made no attempt at all to handle this professionally. I wish you the best in future endeavors. Okay. <sighs> Let's break that message down a little bit. I have received no email from you. Um, I could possibly believe that had there not already been a pattern of very strange instances of Caitlin's communications to me or mine to her not getting to her or not getting through. Put a pin in that one. We're going to come back to it in a bit. The next line. As you know, per my correspondence months ago, I converted your table sponsorship to virtual sponsorship after you elected to not attend the in-person convention and instead attend virtually. There was no communication about that. There was no communication at all about my sponsorship, as I stated before, between August 27th, 2021, when I paid the sponsorship fee, and July 10th, when this conversation took place. Nothing. If there was any intention on her part to convert my sponsorship to a virtual sponsorship. She certainly did not communicate it with me, but more to the point, I don't think there was any such thing as a virtual sponsorship. I don't think that that ever existed at all. And I don't think that she ever had any intention 
to create one or to convert an in-person sponsorship to it. And in fact, I know that she had no intention of converting mine because on Friday when somebody asked her about my table, her response was, it's here somewhere. And if there had been a virtual sponsorship, it was Caitlin's responsibility and solely hers to proactively communicate that with me, talk to me about what she had in mind, get my buy-in on it, because that's a very different sponsorship. The sponsorship I purchased was for an event that was going to host 280 people over about a day and a half. Virtual sponsorship was about 90 people, um, 90 to 100, I'm thinking, for about two hours total. We'll say three to be generous. I don't, I don't believe it was three total. So the suggestion that she's making there is that I sponsored and was aware I sponsored a three hour Zoom call for $300 US. I sponsored each hour of this Zoom call for $100 according to that and according to Caitlin. That makes zero sense. I would never have agreed to that. Either way, it was never communicated to me. I think it is interesting to note also, though, that some of the things that were sort of billed as fact about this convention, um, such as the number of attendees being 280, and then Caitlin posting about the event being sold out, leading people to believe that 280 tickets had sold. I believe there were under 200 people there total. So there was definitely already some discrepancy in what was billed and what was ultimately, what ultimately happened. Certainly not suggesting that Caitlin lied about their being enough tickets for 280 people. Um, I'm sure there were. I'm sure that they just didn't all sell. And I think that that's fine. Um, but again, something to be communicated to your sponsors and stakeholders so that they know what is, you know, what the actual situation is. To come back to this message, though, she did say that I had been refunded for my sponsorship fee. Um, as well as my virtual convention tickets. So I went to PayPal to look and this is what was in there. So it's a confirmation of uh, payment for this amount in Canadian dollars. It roughly works out. There's a bit of wonkiness with the conversion because everything I've ever paid to TPC has been in US dollars. It was returned to me in Canadian, which kind of wonks it up a little bit, but anyway. The thing really of note about this refund confirmation is the note that says full refund for convention sponsorship and virtual ticket per APP's decision to withdraw. I did not make a decision to withdraw from virtual convention. That is just a lie. My response to Caitlin that night reads as follows. Correspondence about converting my table sponsorship to virtual sponsorship? I didn't receive any communication about that. There was never any communication to me about any conversion to the type of sponsorship. I told you I wouldn't be able to attend in person and that I'd love to buy a virtual ticket. And you said something along the lines of, sure, you can PayPal the money for it. There was no mention of my sponsorship at that time at all, so I had no reason to believe that anything had changed about my sponsorship. If something had changed, it was your responsibility as the event organizer to communicate that to me. It only came to my attention on Friday, and I promptly sent you an email yesterday. 
Furthermore, your message in your PayPal payment saying it was my decision to withdraw from attending convention is disingenuous and untrue, particularly when that is followed up by a message saying you are terminating the relationship between my shop and TBC. And as it was your decision, not mine, to terminate me from the July sale, I expect you to return my participation fee as well. The response I got said you have been fully refunded and you were refunded prior to my even sending the response. Best wishes for future, which I did see afterwards that I had been. It had come in a separate transaction because one had gone to her personal PayPal and one had gone to the um, TBC PayPal. In the... I'm going to say three minutes following, I was swiftly banned from the TPC Facebook group, the TPC sale shop owners group for current cycle shops, the TPC Black Friday shops group, which I didn't, I didn't know I was still a part of that. Um, we usually get kicked out at the end of every sale cycle. I was banned from the TPC or blocked from the TPC Instagram. And I was also banned from the Penny Pages Facebook group, um, which Caitlin had done as she was an admin, uh, which just truthfully, that struck me as funny. That's just a power move. <laughs> Whatever makes you feel better, I guess. Maybe worth mentioning that Caitlin did not block me from her personal Instagram. At some point she did unfollow me, however, she is still viewing my posts and stories. Um, so I don't, I don't know. They're not, I don't know. It just, that, that's a fact. Weirdly, at some point last week or earlier this week, I can't remember, I was unblocked from the TPC Instagram account briefly and then reblocked. So I, I don't know what happened there either, but there's that. So that's the story of how I got banned from TPC. I said a little bit earlier that I was going to go back and talk about some of the other things I mentioned. Um, and I want to do that now because I do think that it provides some context to what happened here. And I think it also provides some context to helping understand um, the way that Caitlin operates. So I mentioned that I joined the TPC book club a few months after it started. I paid my $10 fee um, for the year. I, I think I only attended one of the, like one month's book chat, um, but I did continue to read the posts. I liked the book recommendations. Um, still like being a part of the group. I just wasn't able to attend the, the actual book chats, which I don't believe were a requirement to be in the book club, although I'd be happy to be corrected if I'm wrong. That annual fee, I think I joined in April, so it would have been due in April. Um, there were some messages in the book club group that memberships had been converted to quarterly renewals, so they were all being extended, I think. So I knew that my membership payment would be due this spring and was waiting for information about it. There were several posts where Caitlin tagged a whole bunch of people and said, if you're not tagged, it's not time yet. Um, so I was watching for those. And then one day I realized that I wasn't in the group anymore. This was mid May ish. And I went and looked at the activity log for groups and sure enough on May 16th, I believe it was the 16th, I had been removed from the group. So I reached out to a friend who um, is also in the group and said, hey, was there a post about renewals that I didn't see? Maybe I missed it um, and I didn't pay my renewal on time. And so obviously that would be completely um, a completely justified removal. Uh, it would be a, definitely an oversight on my part. Um, and she let me know that also on May 16th, at 11.52 p.m., Caitlin had tagged a whole bunch of people and said that their membership renewals were due by, I believe it said June 1st, May 31st or June 1st. 
So sometime either just before posting that or just after posting that, she just removed me from the group. So <laughs> communication is at the heart of everything she does. <laughs> Editing Kate here. I did mean to mention in the video that I had a brief conversation with Caitlin about the book club. Um, I asked if there was a reason that I had been removed from it and she said that renewals were due and that she tagged everyone and then if they hadn't paid them uh, they were removed from the group. I think that's what it said. I'll put it up on the screen here. Um, she said that I had been tagged four or five weeks back. She did say that I could rejoin at any time. But whether it was an oversight or whether it was on purpose, uh, I definitely was not tagged in a post because I was specifically looking out for them knowing my renewal was coming up. I also mentioned the Black Friday sale from last year. So in August, I was invited to participate. It is by invitation only. It is a big event. Um, I was thrilled and said, yes, absolutely. I would love to be a part of it. And she let me know that more information was going to come in October. Between August and October, we were moving unexpectedly, like I shared earlier. So I, while it was on my radar to be on the lookout for information, I certainly wasn't thinking that I needed to reach out proactively or that um, she was waiting on anything from me for that. I expected it would come when it would come. And then on October 13th, I saw that the Black Friday shops had been posted, like the partici participating Black Friday shops, and I was not included in it. So I reached out to Caitlin and asked, I said that I'd seen that they were posted and that I wasn't in it and asked, was I cut from it? And I saw the typing bubbles and then they disappeared and then typing bubbles disappear, typing bubbles disappear. And then finally a message that said, do you see any of my other messages? As well as one that said, I've sent a few the last few days and hadn't heard back from you. So I said, the last one I have that shows is the one I sent you on September 8th. She said, are you serious? I said, oh my God, what did I miss and where did they go? She said, I can easily add you back in. Give me a few minutes. I was like, why isn't she responding? So I sent a screenshot of what I could see in our chat, which was September 8th, I sent her a message. And then October 13th, I sent her a message about this. She said, literally speechless, easy to fix happily. I said, oh, I can't believe this happened of all the times. Thank you so much, sorry for the trouble. She said, don't be. Please send me a friend request so I can add you to the group, done fixed. I said, thank you so much. I literally felt panicky when I saw the shops posted and she said, I felt the same five minutes ago. Is it possible that Caitlin had messaged me several times in the few days prior? Yes, it is possible. It is absolutely possible. I don't, I don't know because she didn't send me a screenshot of what she had sent. So I still don't know what she had actually allegedly sent me, but is it possible? Yeah. There were no other instances around that time, or I think ever, where I hadn't got messages that people were sending. People were getting my messages. I wasn't hearing from them saying, hey, I sent you a message, why haven't you replied? But I'm not gonna say that it's impossible. I'm just gonna say, I don't know. I don't know what she could see on her side, if anything. I do have my doubts because, because I hadn't had issues with anyone else, because there, there's no screenshot. Like I didn't even get filled in on what I was supposed to have gotten. And then convention sponsorship happens and she didn't get my email. I just, I have doubts about it. The last thing I want to talk about is Caitlin's YouTube channel membership. So she launched a membership on YouTube um, in February 2021. I believe that's when she launched it anyway because I'm pretty sure I joined it as soon as she launched it. 
editing Kate again. It was April 2021 and I do realize that a little bit later in the video but wanted to make that clear here. Um, I joined at the highest tier which was um, I think $14.99 US a month which in Canadian um, currency after taxes that works out to about $22 a month. Um, for that highest tier there were a bunch of things that we were supposed to get. Um, they included things like recognition in videos, which I didn't, that wasn't important to me. There was gonna be things like a monthly um, exclusive hand-drawn wallpaper uh, for our phones, I think. Um, and what I really joined for, which was the members only videos. Now, I wanna be clear that the description of that perk just said members only videos my assumption was that it would be additional exclusive plan with me or planner related videos because any other time i've joined anybody's um membership or patreon or any kind of support where there are perks like that it's it's always been additional content um in the realm of the content they provide on their public channels. So that fully my assumption, but I think a pretty reasonable one. Um, but I joined and I was excited to see where, where it went and what we would be getting. I did notice over the months that it didn't quite seem like we were actually getting what we were supposed to be getting, but I knew that she was still getting it set up. So you know, I get it. There's, there's a, a process for that. But in December of last year, I really started to look at what had been provided versus what had been promised. And those did not add up either. So in terms of the exclusive monthly wallpaper, one had been provided, I think the first month, and then no others had been posted which is minor really, but still something that we were promised that wasn't delivered. And the members only videos, which I had thought would be additional plan with me or planner related content in some way, ended up being a weekly video of one to four minutes in length, usually from the carpool lane while she was picking up her kids from school, chatting about random things. I mean, many of them were a minute or two long. So there's not, there was no actual content there. When I added up everything, like the, the total of all of those videos from the beginning of February to the end of December, they amounted to an average of four minutes a month of members only video. So for $22 Canadian, I was getting, I think my name was in the, in the description of her videos as a supporter. And essentially that, that was it. I would not call an average of four minutes a month additional content. I wouldn't even really call that members only videos. I understand that that's vague wording and can be interpreted in many ways. So if that was the intention all along, then then okay. But I do think it was a reasonable assumption to think that members only videos would be content related to the channel and would be exclusive videos with actual content in them. So at that point I was ready to cancel. I decided to wait until the year mark because I wanted to see what the annual gift bundle was going to be. But at the end of February, I was not able to continue my membership because money was tight and every dollar counted and $22 a month for, for that was not, it just wasn't in the cards. So I canceled it. So I think I've been saying she started the channel or the membership in February. It was April. So between April and December was when I calculated all of that. And one 
wallpaper had been provided in April and then a, a total or an average of four minutes a month for videos, which makes it like, I think it was 32 minutes total of content, members only content in the eight months that I had calculated there. I said that the YouTube channel was last thing I wanted to mention. There is one other thing and that is I want to touch briefly on the sponsorship that I paid for the garden party. I had not thought a single thing of that sponsorship until a few days ago when I actually pulled up the document to look at that. I had assumed that all of the perks had been fulfilled for that. I, as I mentioned, was the one of the floral sponsors. I think there were two floral sponsors. It was $175 US. And for that, I was to receive recognition before and during on TBC, TBC Nation, and CLK09 social media. My shop's logo featured at check-in, a quarter page program feature, exclusive sponsor custom mask, and guaranteed ticket to the event. I couldn't attend the event. It was in July. Uh, we still had travel restrictions. Work trips were allowed, but I, I didn't really feel like this qualified. I was asked for my logo, so I assume it did make it into the program. I haven't seen a program, but I assume that it did. There were no logos at all at the registration table. Um, I went back to Caitlin's vlog about it to look, and there was nothing on the registration table except for like name tags and stuff. The exclusive sponsor custom mask, I don't even know what that is. I assume that it was to be a face mask with my shop's name or logo on it because I know TBC Nation had been selling face masks, customizable ones. I did not receive that. I, I would guess that the if I asked about that, the answer would be that I would have gotten it had I attended in person. But there was no mention of it at all. And I think truly for $175 sponsorship um, for an event that's a couple hours long, you could probably mail a mask for a few dollars uh, to a sponsor who can't attend in person. But just my, my opinion. So what do I make of all of these things? What I make of it is that Caitlin is a woman who majorly over promises and majorly majorly under delivers. And I would like to think, I would have liked to think that I, that this was an isolated incident, that it only happened to me. But when I posted that image on social media last week to explain it, I was absolutely flooded with DMs from people who um, not only wanted to express their support for what had happened, but so many people who have had run-ins like this with Caitlin, not all involving money, but some just involving weird power plays um, that resulted from them, in most cases, daring to question her on something. And that is the theme that I have seen with her the entire time that I've been involved in TPC. At the start of every sales cycle, Caitlin does a live video to provide the shop owners with the important dates and the theme and all of that stuff. It would it would be so much faster and easier on everybody if it was just a post, but that is neither here nor there, not something I have to worry about anymore. <laughs> but she starts each video by saying things like, you know, I, I run this ship, I have rules you may not understand, just go with them, they make sense, they work. Um, even if they seem like they don't, that's not a direct quote, but pretty close to a couple, what she said a couple months ago. Uh, when in reality, like the rules are kind of arbitrary and very, very um, inconsistently enforced. Um, but anyway, she has rules. If you question them, I think you are immediately moved to the not a, not a fan. Caitlin's not a fan list, but it definitely was not just me who's experienced things like this. I've heard of at least a few people who are in exactly the same position I am with the sponsorship for the convention. I don't know that anybody else has asked for their money back. I think there are some people who are 
afraid to speak up because as small businesses, we rely on sales like this for big chunks of our business. We're trying to support our families and you get into a, a situation where there is a power dynamic there and it, it is intimidating. And I think that my opinion is that Caitlin thrives on that a little bit, which I think is honestly disgusting, but it is what it is. This sponsorship guide uh, for convention is full of, it's full of promises that weren't delivered on. There are tons and tons of mentions of space in the program that sponsors were going to get, half page, quarter page, dedicated for people who donated uh, swag, dedicated swag gratitude page, um, dedicated door, door gooder page for door prize contributors. Uh, there's, there's all kinds of stuff that is not in this, this program. Each table sponsor was supposed to receive a quarter page program feature. I don't know how many sponsorships she sold total for table sponsorships, but there are eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine lines listed for table sponsors all in one line per shop. Definitely not a quarter page per. There are lots of other sponsors that are not recognized the way that they were promised they would be. There are a couple mentions, I think, of door prizes. There are, there's no list of shops who donated swag and that is a huge amount of work and effort. So yeah, overall, pretty disappointing, pretty disheartening for somebody who claims that communication is at the heart of everything she does. I don't think her actions back that up. For somebody who is supposed to be supporting and promoting and building up small businesses and small business owners. I don't think her actions back that up. For somebody who re I think really wants everybody be to believe that she has the utmost integrity, I think she's proven that her actions don't back that up. Caitlin repeats the line, I'm not a shop owner and will never be a shop owner constantly even though she has both TPC Nation and an Etsy shop, which she's making a pretty good chunk of each product that's listed there and not made by her. So definitely a shop owner. And I don't have a problem with people running collab sales who are also shop owners. I think most of them are. I have a problem with pretending that you're not one when you are. When the shop that you run, I would say, is probably the biggest competition for any other shop owner participating in the sale. So why am I sharing all of this now? I'm sharing all of this now because I don't like bullies. And I think that Caitlin is one. And I think that there are a lot of people who, who have felt confused about some of the communications they've had with her and the run-ins they've had with her definitely a lot of people, so many people who see that things aren't quite right, can't quite put their finger on it. I, I want, if you are one of those people, I want you to know that what you see is true. Caitlin talks a lot about the TPC group being a community and it is. 99% of the people in the group are absolutely fantastic. And I, love them and I've met some of my absolute favorite people in the world through that group and I I am genuinely going to miss it but as much as it's a community it's a community in spite of Caitlin because Caitlin runs it like it's a dictatorship I don't like people who put on one persona for one thing and then a completely different one for another I don't like the sugary, sweet, innocent, naive persona that comes out during things like the big old live. And then the one that lies and gaslights and 
just fully makes things up in an attempt to justify her, her what? Her poor behavior, her mistreatment of others. I don't like that. TPC has some great people. I'm sad that I'm banned from the group and from the Instagram again now. I don't, I don't think that either of those was necessary. I mean, she could have muted me forever in the group if she'd wanted to. First of all, post approvals are on. So I, it's not like I could post anything bad about her, which I would never anyway in her group. But she could, she could have muted me probably for the rest of time and still at least let me read the posts because it is a great central location to see what a lot of wonderful shops are doing and what they what new stuff they have coming out. I have supported the TPC shops for a long time and I I have no intention of stopping. So yeah, it is too bad that that she banned them from me. She could have frozen me out of sales like she's done to tons of other shop owners, <laughs> not banned me from the group. But I guess I committed an unforgivable offense by asking for accountability and holding her accountable for what she said she would do. And that is what it boils down to in the end, I think, is that I called her out on something and she does not tolerate that. So that is that. That is the whole story. That is what happened. That is the summary of a lot of things that really that really didn't have to happen the way that they happened but they did and here we are what does this mean for me going forward well it means that I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing I'm gonna keep making stickers I am gonna continue to hold sales on my regular schedule there will always be freebies with them because I like freebies I will continue to spoil my Facebook group as much as I possibly can. And they'll be the community that I base a lot of what I design on. So what they're looking for is what I will do my best to provide. And that's it. If you have stuck with me this long, thank you. I appreciate it. If you're a shop owner who has had this kind of experience with TPC and with Caitlin. I'm sorry to hear that. I know I'm not the only one. So I know you're not the only one. For the record, I would never judge a shop owner for continuing to participate in the sale in the group because I know the impact that it can have on your business. And I also know that there are a lot of people who feel beholden. And that's a really crummy position to be in and a really crummy thing to feel. So just know I see you. I get it. I'm sorry that you're in that position. And that is all I have to share today. So thank you for watching and I will see you all again soon. Bye friends.